It's uh, pleasing to rise to a, uh, an ovation from the Labour Party. Um, Mr. Mr Speaker, it, it seems to me that there are three issues that have been discussed over and over and over again in this debate, and we've just heard uh, about two of them. We've heard about democracy, we've heard about water, and we've heard about regulatory impact statements and reports on, on bills. And Mr Speaker, as Dr Norman reminded us, this is a third reading debate, uh, a debate to, to go back and reflect on the, the whole of the issues that have been raised over the last 24 hours in, this, in respect to this bill. And so time and time and time again, we've heard from the other side of the House that this is about democracy, this is about the suspension of democracy, this is about the outlawing of democracy. Sir, when the House resumed uh, at 7pm this evening, Dr Russell Norman talked about the Act and the National Parties introducing a bill to debo abolish democracy in Canterbury. That's what Act and National was doing, Mr Speaker. It was abolishing democracy in Canterbury. And as he sat down, he said, this is a bill to get rid of democracy. This is a bill to strip four to 500,000 people of their rights. Well, sir, Mr Norman and his colleagues, Dr Norman and his colleagues, are the last people that can speak on democracy in this House, sir. No, I'm not the only one. No, I, no I'm not the only one. But I, you certainly can't speak about democracy, Mr Twyford. In fact, I, I suspect, Mr Twyford, you could speak about democracy. Order. order, order. Because, order. Uh, sorry, sorry, Ms, sorry, Mr Chairman. Um, Mr Speaker, rather. I, I, I think that Mr Twyford could speak about democracy because he wasn't part of the sordid, sorry, parliamentary Labour Party that governed this country from 2005 to 2008, a party, sir, that saw the introduction of the Electoral Finance Bill. And, sir, if you're going to criticise uh, the Act and National Parties in this bill about democracy, I think we need to go back and reflect on the record of the Labour government over the three preceding years. Because the Labour government introduced a bill that said to all New Zealanders, if you want to so much as spend a single dollar, a single dollar, speaking out either in support or against the government, you must as a minimum sign a piece of paper in front of a Justice for Peace saying, I, Phil Twyford, promise not to spend more than $5,000. Because, Mr Twyford, if you couldn't sign that piece of paper, you were required to register as a third party. And, Mr Speaker, the Labor Party and the Green Party colleagues they had in cohorts with them said to the people of New Zealand, said to the people of New Zealand, if you want to speak out, if you want to criticise this government as the very minimum, as the very minimum, if you want to spend more than a single dollar, you have to sign a piece of paper in front of a Justice of the Peace. And they said to New Zealanders, if you don't like that, you rise up and protest. If you don't like that, you make a submission to the Justice and Electoral Select Committee. You make a submission to the Justice and Electoral Committee and tell us what you think, because that's our plan. And, and Mr Speaker, I can't think of a more despicable action that any political party could bring on to this Parliament. We heard from Leanne Dalziel this afternoon. She got up there and she said that she'd been in Parliament for some 20 years, and she said she had never seen anything as dramatic as a bill such as this. Well, Mr Speaker, I can't think of anything worse than saying to New Zealanders, if you want to rise out and speak out against the government, rise out and so much as, as put a single piece of paper through a Xerox machine and to make a statement, you must have all signed a piece of, pa a piece of paper in front of a Justice of Peace. Mr Speaker, I want to move on to the issue of water. Water is very valuable. And we know how important it is to conserve water. Because, sir, this country of ours has got so much potential. It has so much potential. And we wonder why, sir, we're not as wealthy as our neighbours across the Tasman in Australia. And, sir, that is because we have not governed this country properly. We have not realised the potential. We have not put in place the policies to create the prosperity that this country can. And, sir, this ECANS bill, this ECAN bill goes some part way towards that, sir, because we are a rural economy. We depend for our exports, for our livelihoods, on a large part on the farming sector. 
Sir, the Honourable uh, Prime Minister John Key said recently, well, Australia might have their minerals, but once they've dug up, they've gone. What we have is we have water, and water comes from the skies, and long after Australia has dug up its last mineral, the rain will continue to fall on New Zealand. And, sir, we can do a lot to harness the power and the value that is in that water. And we currently only harness some 1.5 per cent of the rainwater that falls on New Zealand. Imagine the prosperity that would come to this country if we could just double that, just double from 1.5 per cent, Mr Speaker, to 3 per cent. If we could just catch and utilise just 3 per cent of the water that falls um, on this country. And we could put that water to great use. We could put it to use, Mr Speaker, in agriculture. You have heard the allegations this afternoon from the Green Party and the fact that the Minister of uh, Agriculture is a farmer. Well, sir, farmers work very hard and they are the backbone of this economy. But, sir, there is something else you can do with water. You can actually generate electricity with it, sir. And the water, sir, in the Canterbury Basin, in the Canterbury region, sir, will be, uh, will be a lot more valuable on the 1st of July. Look, Mr Speaker, I, I, I find it fascinating sitting and speaking and, be, and being shouted and abused at. I, I'm, I'll, I'll go silent and so I can hear what you have to say, Mr Jones. It's more than a drip, Mr Jones. It's a, it's a flow. It's a flow. And the water, sir, that flows down the Waitaki River generates wealth. It generates wealth for our farmers. It allows our farmers to irrigate our farms and allows us to generate electricity, sir. And the tragedy, sir... The tragedy of harnessing water, sir, is that from the 1st of July, this country is going to go where no other country has gone before, because we are introducing an emissions trading scheme, and the effect of that, sir, will be to raise the price of electricity by 5 per cent. Treasury told the Finance Committee, Mr Speaker... Order. That the emission trading scheme has got nothing to do with this bill, and I'll ask you to, to focus in, please. Third reading is about what has been discussed... Uh, earlier, and the emissions trading scheme is not part of that. John Bus, go on. Thank, 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 thank you, Mr Speaker. My, my, my understanding is what, is what is being discussed in this bill is a bill, sir, to, uh, to, to introduce commissioners uh, into the Canterbury region, sir, to administer, among other things, a water plan, a plan to uh, manage the resources of the Canterbury region. And so that water is a very valuable resource. It results in power generation, and what I was trying to explain to the House, Mr Speaker, come the 1st of July, uh, when electricity is forced to go up, or is in forecast to go up, the, um, the, the people who generate electricity with water, Mr Speaker, and in particular I'm referring to Meridian Energy and the dams they have in the South Island, those companies, by the way the New Zealand electricity market works, will they'll be able to push through a 5 per cent price in the, uh, increase in the price of electricity without paying for any emissions, such as their competitors at Genesis would do with thermal energy. And so what you're going to see, Mr Speaker, is windfall profits. The profits that, that Genesis, are current, sorry, Meridian, are currently making, well, you've seen, nothing like, nothing, you've seen nothing yet like what they will make, Mr Speaker, because what we're introducing from the 1st of July is essentially a 5% surcharge on water that will see massive profits, windfall profits, and a massive value put on that water. And every single New Zealander will pay for that. Every single, and, Mr Speaker, I'm very proud, proud and sad, to think I'm only one of five MPs who are standing up and opposing a 5% surcharge on electricity from the 1st of July, a surcharge that will go on every single New Zealander, young and old, poor and well off, and the elderly, particularly in winter, sir, will have to pay more for their electricity, simply so companies like Jet, something like Meridian can earn more for their water that valuable water. Order. I've mentioned to the member that this is a debate about, about what's happening with ECAN, and it's not about a debate about Meridian or, or price increases or whatever uh, might be affected from 1 July. I'll ask the member, he has 40 seconds remaining, to focus in on the bill. Order, Mr Biscone. Speaker, can I speak the point of order? Point of order, John Biscone. The, Mr Speaker, the reason I'm um, conducting the debate in the way I am is, as you say, that this bill is about, about ECAN, uh, the Council, the appointment order. of commissioners and water. Order. Well, if you'd mentioned that, uh, that would have been fine, but I'd have to say to the member 
that we've had, um, we've had about eight minutes of other things, and I did warn the member earlier on, and I'll answer